Hey everyone, my name is Pratik Naik and I'm an editorial and commercial retoucher. I've been working in the industry for the last 12 years or so and the most annoying part about the entire retouching process is actually building your workflow and having something that's customizable, doesn't get in the way, and is beautiful to work with. That's why we created Infinite Retouch. We wanted to have the ability to really edit and modify your own workflow so you can save a bunch of layers to create exactly what you're going for. Whether that's having a workflow for your skin retouching, whether that's saving layers for color grading, it's all possible with Infinite Retouch. It's truly a panel that has everything in one place. And honestly, unlike anything out there, this is something that you can customize right in Photoshop. So you're not really stuck with having something that you can't modify and use to your own whim. Now enough talking, let's just actually get into it and show you all the cool features about Infinite Retouch. To start off with, I have this amazing photo that I took here in Arizona and my friend Arbeni was a great model and I used Infinite Retouch originally when I edited this photo, which makes it really fun for me to demonstrate on as a backdrop. Now at the heart of it here, we have our create button, which effectively by itself, when you click on it, it generates a really nice retouching workflow for those of you who would like to have something right off the bat. It's actually well, very encompassing to begin with and I think very powerful. However, if you decide that you would like to override this and create something that is of your own, then you're able to do that. And let me show you how. I'm going to go and open up this other photo here really quick. And you'll notice over here on my layer stack, I have these three folders, you know, labeled and color coded. And let's just say theoretically, this is something you would want to save and uh, make it your default. Well, it's as simple as selecting all of your layers and you can select the background as well, just to be thorough, ensuring all these folders are open because it won't save the background. It'll only save these empty layers here and uh, these adjustment layers. So I'll right click on the create button and it's as simple as saying save folder setup. Once I've done that, it'll say, yep, all layers have been saved. I'll close it back. And then just to test it out, I'm gonna delete my layer stack here. I'm gonna hit the create button. And just like that, it's saved and added your own layers. But even cooler than that, Let's just say, for example, you have another workflow that you would like to save. Well, since the create button is already kind of taken up, we have a separate section called user, which you can save as many setups and layers as you like. So let's just say theoretically, I delete this group here for a moment, and maybe we go ahead and, uh, you know, add a curves for, for whatever reason. <laughs> and I would like to save this as a new setup. Maybe you would like has set up for a commercial purpose and one for an editorial purpose allows you to do a bunch of things, even saving color grading options. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, highlight all of them. Or if you're in the middle of a layer stack and there's a bunch of other layers underneath that you don't want to save, then just go ahead and save or highlight all of these like this. And then I'm going to say plus, right click for setup and say save personal layer stack. But before I do, I'm going to rename this to my workflow two or whatever it is that you want to call it. And then hit save. And that's it. Simple as that. And if I delete these and then run that button again, you'll see that it actually saved everything that I intended to do. But even cooler than that is within these user layers, when I right click on them and the same thing with the create button at the bottom here, you have auto run action. So let's say theoretically, you would love to run a color grading action after you've executed this prompt. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to find my action because it's going to actually look into all the action uh, groups and folders that I have and say, which one do you would like to use? I'm going to call it color grading. I'm going to go to my action and call it warmth, which is what I have installed. And I'm going to say apply. And then that's it. Now, if I do that again, one more time and say workflow two, you'll notice that it's going to run the workflow. And then it actually added my color grading option on top of that, which makes it super easy to incorporate actions into the user layer section. You can also have a user layer section without even running or saving any layers. You can simply just run an action by itself if you want to. And this is great for anything that you really rely on a specific action for. Then you can select it and then simply run it by itself. Like I have a grain action here. I'm going to say apply. I'm going to just call this grain. There's no save button. It automatically registers. I'm going to hit back. And if I click on it, it just runs that specific action. So this is a good amalgamation or a merger of different workflows different actions together to create something that is very specified to you.
Now that you have an idea of how that generally works, let's go over to our retouching and tool tabs to really actually enable you to add on and adjust and customize your workflow as you're working. So if I go over to retouch, you'll notice here I have normal, lighten and darken for different kind of healing methods. We have low and high preview for frequency separation. And even cooler is whenever I click on it, right click, I should say, you can change the method. So if you prefer having Gaussian blur as your method or median as your method, you could do that. You can also have a copy of the high layer on top and color, or you could just have a blank layer in between like I typically do when I'm retouching. And I'm going to go and select median plus extra as my method. And I can also go over here to edit and change all the names, the colors of every group, layer, etc. Also really cool is I can run an action after frequency separation is, is done, or I can auto select tool. So if I run frequency separation and I decide that, you know what, I would prefer to select the brush tool, I'll say yes. And then I would prefer to have me select the blank layer in between the high and the low once it's run. Now, when I go back, I'm going to just quickly turn off uh, these layers here for a second. I'm going to say low preview. And suddenly now, once I hit OK, you'll see that it actually selects my blank layer and it selects my brush tool, which I told it to do. You can even have it select presets. The coolest thing about this other option here with frequent separation is if you prefer seeing the texture detail first, I can click on high preview and it allows me to see the texture that I'll be displacing. That way I can get an exact idea based on whatever it is I'm trying to do, the exact radius I'm looking for. So it gives me really cool options like that. But also with Dodge and Burn, it does the same thing. Over here at the bottom, I can really truly customize everything because by nature, or I should say by default, it has curves and gray layers. So if I click on them, it has the Dodge and Burn curves, but you'll see it has it in folders. So that way you can easily mask it out and then add any other adjustment layer that you want in there. But if you prefer, as I mentioned, you can save your own methods as well. Also cool enough is if I right click on curves, you'll notice that I can also change the method that I use. I can use a 50% gray layer. I can use curves with a saturation adjustment layer attached to it. You can use our new infinite curves, which really accounts for the color profile that your document is in to provide really accurate results. And that I think is the coolest part about it. And of course, as usual, you can see the edit functions and edit everything that you like there. Now, as I go back, you can also see that even though it says curves and I go and right click on it, if I change my method to say 50% gray and I go ahead and edit, I can also change the name of the button. Instead of saying curves, I can call it 50% gray. And then that's it. I can go back, back, and then now the button updates to be whatever it is that I'm looking for based on the dodge and burn options that I have. So these two buttons here are your two primary methods and there's a ton you can do with that too. And of course, no retouching process is complete without helper layers. Helper layers are something that we use all the time in retouching. Whenever I enable them here, it creates a group on top, all turned off by default. However, whenever I go and click on any of these buttons, I can access them. And I can also stack them if I would like to. So I have different options from solar curve options to luminosity adjustment layer options. I can do color check options so I can see if any colors are out of spec. I can see saturation helper layers to see what saturation levels are. And all of this is explained and defined in detail on our website and in our manual, if you, in case you prefer checking out everything in detail, learning about helper layers. Also, we have a level option. And the good thing about level is that if at any point you decide that you would like to see your brighter or darker view to see within your shadows, to see if you've made any mistakes or see into your highlights to see what's happening, it allows you to quickly do so. I use levels all the time when I'm actually dodging and burning or just healing backdrops. Now let's go over to our tools tab really quick. I'm going to clean up my workflow session since I want to keep it really nice and tidy for you. Over here in our tools tab, you're going to see a bunch of different options as well. Now, the main thing here is hue, saturation and color are different ways of color correcting the skin or whatever it is that you're working on, even if it's landscapes or whatever. And the best part is since you have hue, saturation, and luminosity helper layers, you can combine them together in order for you to really, truly be able to fix whatever it is that you're looking for in a hurry. Once I click on them, they have their own little folder here, which makes it really easy to categorize and keep it really stacked nicely. 
Also, last but not least within this section are our stamp current and below, which is great for liquefying or using camera raw and updating the smart object. So for example, maybe you have a stamp current and below here, which is just a copy of everything that you've worked on and say that you liquefy on this layer, which is what you really should be liquefying on. And maybe there's something that you wanted to do after you're done liquefying underneath. Once you're done, you can just hit update smart object and it will update the liquefy layer to really mirror any adjustments that you made under it. Also cool is going to be our post tools, which is sharpen, smart sharpen, and grain. So for instance, whenever you click on sharpen, we have a fantastic algorithm that ensures your viewing distance will be exactly the amount of sharpening that it requires to look as pleasing as possible from that viewing distance. And of course, you can save presets once you're done. Should you want to access the same thing over and over again? And you can save multiple presets that you like. So if this is your viewing distance that you typically use for the web, I can just say web and then save it. And then it applies directly to the preset section. Once that's done, I can hit close or apply. Or if you prefer to have a very manual kind of workflow, then Smart Sharpen allows you to quickly access that. Lastly, on this tab, we have grain. So when I click on grain, there's three different options that come up. The method of holy grain, which I'll get to in a second. We have digital grain and digital noise. So if you're used to using noise in Photoshop, that option's here for you automatically. So you don't have to actually go into the actual filter menu and modify that. Or you have digital grain, which is in the blur gallery in Photoshop, which is you know, much more realistic. However, we wanted something that was the quintessential grain engine for Photoshop. So we made the holy grain option. And if you look under film types, you'll see four different film types to start off with. And they're effectively 75 megapixel scans of these film types. And the coolest part is we've extra interpolated it to have multiple grain sizes. So should you want a larger grain size and something that's not quite fine, but a little bit bigger, I can do that. I can change my grain amount, which is the intensity and lens damage and lens damage. I think I'm just going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to bump it up to quite a high number. And um, of course, you can save presets if you want to. I can say apply. And of course, it creates a folder for you. I'm going to say close for a second because I've already applied it and I want to see what it's doing. Let's just zoom in here for a moment. You'll see that A, I have these lens issues here. So lens issues are obviously those issues you see whenever you have these film scans and um, you have these little dust specks or whatever to keep things looking really, really authentic, or you just have the grain here by itself. So you have them separated to make it super easy for you to decide what you prefer using and how much. You can see here that the grain is quite intense, but the, the grain looks super beautiful. And so, you know, I just have a lot of fun playing with this and I think you will as well. Now I'm back to our previous image and I want to show you the export tab really quick to give you an idea of what's possible and the different options we have. So for the export tab, I'm going to go ahead and click on process, ignoring everything else for now. Once I click on process, I have an area called default settings. And this is honestly where I use most or spend most of my time. If I'm deciding to export something for, let's say like a Facebook story, I can click on that and then it puts in the perfect parameters for me for quality and color space, etc. I don't have to know any of it. If you want to adjust it, you can. However, you'll notice that the width by height doesn't really match the ratio of my image. So the way that we actually figured this out was instead of making you crop it perfectly first and then go into export, we decided to simply make you hit process. And then once that's done, you'll see that it comes up with these red lines. And what it means is that anything in between these red lines is the perfect space for your Instagram story. And then once you hit process, it's actually going to cut and crop to perfectly fit within the ratio of your Facebook story. And if it, for example, you can see here, it kind of like snaps like that. I can easily undo that by clicking on view, unchecking snap, and now I can move it around really freely to get kind of exactly what I'm looking for. And if that's exactly what I'm looking for, I just going to click on play. And then once it's done, I'm just going to click on open and it will save anywhere that you decide to save it. And for example, this is the air. This is exactly how it's going to look like. So once it's saved, you'll get this version here looking like this. And that's it. Once I click on open, it will save and disappear and go back to your working document. That way, if you want to export more things, you can. I can go ahead and say, you know what, Instagram story, 
Let's just do that and say process. And then now it does the same thing again. But the coolest part about this one is that here, the yellow parts are the ones that it kind of warns you and says, you know what, this is the area that probably is going to be for your username. Um, and at the bottom, you'll have that comment little thing and reaction thingy. So this is kind of the safe area that you'll see. But you can, again, adjust it to kind of fit what you're looking for. And then just hit play. And then you'll see here, like I mentioned before, that it actually saves and it's going to look like this. And you can see the yellow area is not shown here anymore, but you'll see it whenever you upload to Instagram of what the safe area is going to be. That's it. Then I'm done. And now I'm done and I have a bunch of different options and my working file is still here for me to use, edit, modify, or whatever. Last but not least, you'll also notice here in the processing section, at the bottom we have sharpen preset and grain preset. This is really great because in case you don't want to add a bunch of unnecessary layers on your layer stack, you can just save a preset and then it will apply the sharpening and grain for you as you process. So for every single image, in your series, you don't have to necessarily sharpen every single one hand or one by one. It makes it really fast and really convenient. But this is something that I wish I personally had when I first started retouching, because obviously from you know what you were able to see, I can create something that is more customizable than actions. It didn't get in the way. It was an obstacle for me to work. And I felt really excited working again. I know it sounds crazy and you probably relate if you're watching this all the way up to here. But being able to do that is such a relief and it's something that, you know, is easy to do. You don't have to learn something completely foreign in order to actually operate it. It was modifiable. And even cooler is with the free trial, you're able to get and use this panel and see exactly how it works. The only thing you can't do with a free trial is modify and save any of the things that I showed you today. However, if you have the full version, you can do that. But even cooler is you can back it up and import other people's preferences. So if you have somebody that um, you like their workflow and the way they set it up, you can import it and make it your own. And I can do that with you and you can do that with me too. And even cooler is we have multiple languages. So if you prefer Spanish, French, German, or English, you can do that. And all the layers and the tools and the names, all of it becomes renamed accordingly. So this is something that's from me to you, from our team to you. And I hope you truly love this experience and it makes retouching fun again for you.